Hi everybody and welcome to this episode of what's going on over at the test facility with both Sergio and Phil. I'm excited to be here up in front of everybody once again and if you want to make sure you don't miss these updates, make sure you click the subscribe button. So guys, what's our update this, this time? So like always, we're continuing testing here at the test wall. Uh, behind me, we've got two samples that are ongoing. Uh, we just completed these builds. Uh, featuring a specialty panel and then drive and finish over those. Um, we've got two different scenarios here. So if this is gonna yield some pretty interesting information for us into the products that we're used to, to develop these, right? Perfect, so we're, we're validating two different installation methodologies. So that'll be pretty interesting once we see those results. If this triggers something in your mind about something you wanna validate, that's where you're always gonna wanna reach out to us so we can do something like this for your project. So that's great for what's in process. What about what we tested? So we look over there, we're actually, we tested one of our previous assemblies we looked at with the ProGlish EPA and the Spectrum 1. We decided to really test its limits. It went six inches over the structure of the wall, which is a very lengthy distance. Yes, it's pretty amazing that it can move to that level of, of you know, to take that kind of movement of entire six inches. So yeah. ProGlish ETA adhered with Spectrum 1. That was a, a, an amazing assembly test. Um, let's let's go over here and see something about some additional window testing that we can do. Um, we're going to join Jake, which go over here in the Windows Lab. Now we're in the Windows Lab, and I'm here once again with Jake. Jake, walk me through the process um, that you follow. Sure. So we start by cleaning the glass. We put our 14 by 20 lights through the glass washer. After it comes out the other side, we bring it over to our spacer application table where we apply the inner edge foam spacer around the perimeter. We mate a second light on top of that, put the prepared insulating glass unit through the compressor, and then over to the hot melt application station. Perfect, I love that whole process of walking us through. Um, and then what's the last part of that? So after we apply the hot melt behind the spacer, we fill the unit with argon gas, and that lets us measure any change in argon gas for a pass-fail leak durable evaluation. Great. So now that the unit's finished, um, we're now going to do some testing. Just like we do in the other um, room, the main room, where we do testing of assemblies, we're now going to do testing for the IG unit. Mm -hmm. So after we've filled the units with argon, we'll be able to take an initial measurement to see what the concentration is, and then we'll perform the high humidity cabinet testing. So we put the units into the racks and they're subjected to hot, humid air temperature cycling as the first part of the durability and weathering exposure. So 10 days in this cabinet and then we're gonna come back and take a look at it. Yep. What happens next? So next, after we pull our units out of the high humidity cabinet, we move to the thermal cycling chamber. So we'll put the units into the thermal cycling chamber and they'll undergo hot, cold, humid, dry cycling for 63 days per ASTM E2190 specification requirements. So high humidity cabinet, then the 63 days here. What do you do once you're done with that cycling? So after the cycling is complete, we'll pull the unit back out and we'll measure the argon concentration one more time and determining if there's been any change in that concentration, which would indicate a leak. Right, so we're looking to make sure after weathering, is there any leak or any issue with that? Um, so that's that's standard testing, um, ASTM testing. What about any type of forensic testing that you need to do? Yeah, so we also have a forensic analysis station where we're able to receive customers insulated glass units, tear them apart, perform forensic analysis, get really detailed into the modes of failure, and see what opportunities for improved performance, whether it's application or product, are out there. Thanks, Jake, for joining us today and giving us this update. If you want more information about what we do here, um, we have lots of other videos that you, you certainly can um, take a look at. But as always, you know, thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date on future segments, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. What did you think of that episode? Leave a comment down below with your thoughts and don't forget to give us a like. Are you interested in seeing more content like this? 
Hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all our videos and we'll see you next time.